Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Bros, and today we're going to be talking about Psalm 1 in the Bible. Now, before I go into summary and analysis of this biblical psalm, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, Psalm 1 is a very interesting psalm that we find in the Bible, um, and there's a lot that it tells us about um, the differences between uh, the people of God um, and um, um, people who are wicked. Now, w one thing that we see within Psalm 1 is that there's a difference, there's a, there's a separation between uh, the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. Um, there's a difference between the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. Um, you know, it, the psalm um, starts with telling us that, you know, the man who stays away from the counsel of the wicked, the man who stays away from the, the in, within the way where who stands in the way of the sinner, um, you know, they are blessed. Um, the man who does not seek evil, the man who does not seek destruction, the man who seeks um, you know, not to hurt others, not to destroy others, not to steal, not to lie, not to do all of the things that God hates. Because true evil, um, as, as illustrated by the Bible, true evil is when you do the things that God hates. Not, not the things that you don't like, but the things that God specifically t says that he doesn't like or that he hates. Um, God hates um, liars, um, lying, all types of... Of, of wickedness, of, of immorality, of um, hatred. So all the things that are not of God, that are dark, that are evil, that are um, anything, we can say it this way, anything that doesn't, that doesn't adhere to or stick to the idea of loving your neighbor and loving God, um, God hates. Um, so, you know, all of, when you look at the Bible, when you look at the Psalms and the books, there's one constant thing that always remains is that God is a God of love um, and anything that doesn't, that's not consistent or doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't stick to the idea of love is something that God hates. Um, so evil is that evil is against love. Evil is selfish, wicked. Um, it's gossip, it's, it's bloodshed, it's, um, you know, not caring for others. Um, and so um, when God talks about the wicked and the sinner um, and the people who do wrong, they are looking for bloodshed. They are looking to step over people. They are looking to destroy people. They are looking um, to get advantages um, where other people are left behind. And Psalm 1 is really telling you um, um, from the get-go that, the man who stays away from all these evil things, he's blessed. Um, God is watching over him. God is is God sees him. God's face will shine upon that person. Um, and and really, it gives you a comparison between the good and the bad, the righteous and the unrighteous. Um, it tells you that um, these are the, these are the promises. These are the blessings. And see, this is what I love about the Psalms. It tells you the blessings um, that stand. Or, or that exists for the righteous man. It tells you, I mean, this is very beautiful. It tells you that the righteous man is like a tree planted near a stream of water and that and that it it yields its fruit and its season. Now, now that is like that is wonderful because it's telling you a man who follows God, a man um, who is listening to God, a man who is doing what's right, who is who is not um, seeking evil, who is not doing evil, or who turns away from evil. God, God is plants him near a stream of living water, and trees they they in their season, in their time, they produce their fruit. Um, they're fruitful. That that's talking about success. That's talking about wisdom. That's talking about knowledge. That's talking about prosperity. That's talking about happiness. That's talking about joy. That's talking about abundance. That's talking about lacking nothing. So this is how the Bible connects. Um, in Psalm 23, it says, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in Psalm 1, it goes and tells you that a man who follows God, a man who, who turns him away from evil, lacks nothing. So you can see how the word of God is connected throughout all things and how each psalm supports one another. All of it's connected. Um, and Psalm 1 is telling you right there 
that a man who is within God lacks nothing because he is a, a tree planted near a stream of living water. And when that man is planted near a stream of living water, he will produce fruit. He will be fruitful. He will be multiplied. And, and, and to even go forward, it tells you whatever he does prospers. Now that is a promise. That is a blessing that you cannot overlook. It is telling you that a man who is following, a man who is after God's own heart, he, whatever he touches, whatever he seeks, whatever he does, whatever business, whatever idea, whatever thing that's on his heart, that thing is good. Because if you are of God, you are not of evil, you are not of darkness. So the things that you think of are things of light, are things of goodness. The businesses that you think of are things of light, are things of goodness. The things that you plan are things of light, are things of goodness. So everything that you put your mind to, whatever idea, invention, business, or whatever thing that you are dreaming of, it is good. Because when you follow God, in God there is no darkness, God is light. And so you who are planted in God, you who are planted within that stream of living water, you will prosper. You will yield, yield fruit in your season. So that is a, a great promise. That is a great establishment of the, the why that man who, who turns away from evil, who repents and sees God, that's why he's blessed. Because he is planted in God's word, and so God, in, in, in due time, will prosper him. Now, prosperity is not just in wealth and money and power. Prosperity is in wisdom and kindness and love and gentleness. Um, and the psalm goes, it talks about the assembly of the righteous and how the, the sinner, the wicked, will not stand um, in, in, in the assembly of the righteous. Now, why is that? It's because the God does not watch. God does not guide the sinner. The, the sinner, the, the way that the sinner lives um, his life is a way that's that that is not of God. It is wicked. It is, sli it is a slippery slope. Um, Jonathan Edwards has a sermon called um, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. You see, for the sinner, for the wicked man, everything that he does is wicked. And even though that he wants to gain wealth and power, he will never gain it. Now, for a time, he might feel secure. For a time, he might think, oh, I, I got away with it, or I'm doing this or that. But his calamity will come, and when his calamity comes, God will laugh. Because the way of the sinner, the way of the wicked is not straight. It is slippery. It is a slope. It will fall because it is not straight. But a man who is following God, he is on that narrow road. And the narrow road is a straight road, is a righteous road. It will yield fruit. And so um, without any promises, the, um, you know, the, the, the psalm really ends with, you know, the, the wicked will end up in calamity. The, the wicked will end up in destruction. The wicked uh, will end up lost because the way of the wicked is not stable. It's not solid. Um, it's not planted. You see, the righteous are planted. The righteous are firm. The righteous are solid. But the wicked, they are chaff in the wind and, and they burn up. But the way of the righteous is solid. The, 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 the way of the righteous is like a mighty oak. No wind, nothing can knock it down. But the way of the wicked, is, it's like, it's like if, if you've ever seen tumbleweed just like being blown about here and there. See, the way of the wicked, they're never satisfied. They're never established. They're always running here and there and here and there um, and, and doing evil. Um, and when the time, the judgment comes, now here's the thing, and this is why I love Psalm 1, because Psalm 1, it does not, it gives you exactly what you need. It tells you exactly what's going to happen. Um, it tells you the way of the wicked and the way of the righteous. And it tells you that in the judgment, in the judgment, this is talking about the judgment of God. When, when man will stand in front of God, men who do not know Jesus Christ, men who do not seek God, when they will stand in front of God and be judged,
they will not stand. They will be cut down. See, the, this psalm, it has a lot to say about trees. Why does it say a lot about trees? Well, a tree, if it's firmly planted, you know, it stands. And it stands in its season, it stands in its time, and, and nothing can knock it down. No storm can knock it down because the, the, the tree's roots go deep down into the earth and it is extremely solid. And then it, when the Bible talks about it being planted near the stream of living water, but then it also talks about the wicked standing in judgment. So we're, we're, we're picturing two things standing here. Uh, the, the, the righteous man standing um, or being planted near a stream of living water and the wicked man trying to stand in front of the judgment of God, but the wicked man will not stand. And so the God is telling you right there in this psalm that the righteous will stand forever because God guides the righteous. God knows the way of the righteous, but the wicked will not stand the wicked will be burned up. They are like chaff. They have no, no father. They have no home. They have no nature. They don't know what they're doing. Um, they're unstable, un indecisive. And in due time, um, they cannot yield fruit like the righteous. And so... When their time comes, when their season comes, they will not stand. They will be brought down. But the blessing, the promises, the Bible tells you here is that here's a blessing. Here's the blessing for the righteous man. The blessing for the righteous man is that he will stand in the judgment. The blessing for the righteous man is that he will prosper. The blessing for the righteous man is that he will stand firm. The blessing for the righteous man is that he is planted near a stream of living water. The blessing for the righteous man is that his assembly, no wicked thing, will be a part of that assembly. It's blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing for the righteous man. A man who seeks God will see glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Because God knows the way of the righteous man. God sees the way of the righteous man. God leads the righteous man in his way. So Psalm 1 is it's a comparison between the righteous and the wicked. It shows you the blessings of God for the righteous. It makes it tells you the promises of of God for the righteous and it tells you the judgment and the ultimate fate of the wicked but there's 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 a comparison there's a division there's a judgment there's a reward and there's an outcome so there's several things being compared within Psalm 1 here um, and side by side and even and even really makes you think about uh, the way of God and God really tells you there that you know, on earth right now, the wicked and the righteous, you know, they're living on, on the earth. And only he knows who's right, who's righteous um, and who's wicked. And he tells you uh, that the, the people who seek good, who seek righteousness, are those who, who he considers righteous. Right? And he tells you that those who are wicked, here's what they like. And he tells you ultimately what will happen to them. Um, so the Bible is very clear here. It's not hiding anything. It's not putting anything behind a veil. God says, those who do good, I will acknowledge. And those who, eat, who, who do evil, um, I will cut down. Um, it, it's, not, it's not anything uh, um, that's... that's so complex that you can understand it is very clear god tells you the evil will meet their end um, and the righteous will be planted and be with him and their assembly uh will be spotless and their their ultimate place will be with him in heaven um so that's psalm one um it, it's it's a very powerful psalm and it, and it really gives you the promises of god right off the bat um, but that's all I had to say about it. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment.
and I'll see you guys in the next video.